Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler. I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with a weekly astrological message for the week between the 23rd and the 30th of September 2017. I'm filming from uh, Terminal 3 here in Ben Gurion International Airport in uh, Tel Aviv in uh, Israel. And I'm flying off to Athens, Greece to meet some clients. This is the third time I'm coming over and I'm very grateful to have such faithful clients and friends in Athens inviting me over and I hope we're going to have a ball together. Um, before we even begin speaking about the sky, I want to share something personal that has nothing to do with astrology but it does have something to do with the current transits. Current transits can make us extra aware with all that Virgo energy of all our faults and much more stressed and with the opposition between Uranus and Jupiter in the sky and with the opposition between Mars and Neptune we can have a lot of stress and power failures and with uh, uh, Pluto stagnating in the sky turning from retrograde to direct we could dig in too deep until we hurt ourselves we could be too cruel towards ourselves or other people in our lives I've been, you know, not many people know, but my astrological uh, practice has really grown in the last two years, but I'm still keeping a day job, you know. I, I'm still a media expert for NGOs, for non-governmental organizations. I work with children and I work with disabled children and with peace and, uh, and healthcare and all kinds of uh, organizations like that. And of course, environmental organizations. So, up to 3 p.m. each day I work at the office and 3 p.m. I put my other hat on and I become an astrologer and I see people for consultations and I teach and lecture and good things have happened and this my astrological practice have become much more um, full and vibrant and, and lively and suddenly I need to work from 7.30 a.m. each morning until 10.30 p.m. no weekends no holidays and I just wore myself out and I had like a miniature breakdown. I, I slept when I was supposed to be lecturing last week and I had a very... I'm sorry, this is an announcement. I hope you're going to... you're able to hear me as well. And, and I gave... Uh, a, I had a presentation, a very important presentation with Opa Live last week. And I gave it and I wasn't focused enough. And... Ten minutes before the lecture, I had a problem with my PowerPoint and I couldn't bring it on. And I couldn't display it. And that was the point of, you know, panic attack, panic attack, panic attack. So, just want you to know that spiritual, optimistic people like me also have these breakdowns. And I gave a talk that I thought was horrible and I've been beating myself ever since. But other people gave me good feedback on. I've been digging in too deep. And when I felt that stress, you know, it wasn't enough that I was hurting myself because I was wearing myself out. It wasn't even enough that I was wearing my family out, you know, that I was endangering my relationship with my wife, that I was missing out on my relationship with my daughter because I was working so long. You know, that didn't stop me. What stopped me was that I was feeling that people, you know, that my astrology practice is suffering and people are not getting me as professional and as deep as I, as I want to present things, you know. And that made some immediate conclusions and I uh, notified the office that I'll be uh, coming in less and less. And since they love me so much, I'm, I'm, I'm so fortunate. They said, no problem, you just give us the, the days and the hours you want to come in and the rest you can use for your astrology. You just tell us before and, and we'll adapt. So thank you, thank you, Natalie. You're the greatest <laughs> and I love working with you. So I'll have more time devoting to my astrology practice. So why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this because we need to go through the stress, we need to go through the pain, we need to go through the sorrow sometimes to learn the lesson. It is the hard times in our lives that are engraved on our psyche and really make us <clears throat> um, prudent enough not to make the same mistakes all over again. 
So I won't, I won't keep us too long because I have a fly to catch. But in the sky, this week, we have two oppositions. We have Mars conjunct uh, Venus opposing Neptune. And we have Uranus opposing Jupiter. We have Pluto turning direct. And we have Mercury going into Libra. So the, let's talk about the, the coming together of Mars and Venus. This is a beautiful time. This is a time in which the male and the female can, can flow more easily together in ancient times, Mesopotamian times. This would be the, the uh, celestial union between Mars and, Jup and, and, uh, and Venus, between Baal and Ishtar, between uh, um, the ancient female goddess and the ancient warrior, sometimes depicted as brothers and lovers as well. So maybe we can uh, have a Cersei Lannister and uh, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> um, the warrior from uh, her brother, yes, you know who I mean. And the most famous incestual couple from... Uh, <coughs> from um, no, Game of Thrones, thank you. So, this is a happy time, this is a time to eat, drink and enjoy life. This is a time that our carnality is more vibrant. So it's a great time to enjoy ourselves, but when we have this opposition to Neptune, when uh, Mars is opposing Neptune, we could have power failures like I had last week. We can have breakdowns like I had last week. Oh, astrology is affecting me so much, my God. And uh, we could have uh, times of crisis within our own personal initiative. Or on the highest realm, we could um, harness our own deeds and action towards helping the universe and helping the world and aping the general public. And when Venus is opposing, uh, is, is opposing uh, Neptune, we could be too naive within our relationships, we could be too utopic, we could be um, uh, too sensitive in our relationships, or we could draw in very sensitive people, sometimes people with dependency issues, or people with drug or, 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 uh, or drinking issues. Or we could drink or take drugs just to escape from reality ourselves and be too dependent ourselves. These are both uh, uh, angles of the same things we need to, to, to watch. These are two poles of the same things. And of course, we can draw in very spiritual, creative people as well. And this could be an amazing time romantically. Amazing time romantically. I have to catch the flight, so I'm going to be really short. Uranus, Uranus and, uh, and uh, Jupiter. Uranus is the scientific, cerebral, let's get ahead and let's get there fast kind. And Jupiter is all about wisdom and the heart and going and believing that greater things are possible. We can feel these two forces pulling and pushing between us, understanding that we need more research, that we need to be more exact, that we need more to be more scientific, if we want our wisdom to actually be harnessed for the greater good, for the good of the group, for the good of humanity. If we want to expand Jupiter beyond our limits, if we want life to be an ad adventure, we need to use our higher mind. We need to, to have the data. We need to know the knowledge. We need to do the work and we need to do it fast because remember that Aquarius comes after Capricorn. This is still a very hands-on, efficient uh, uh, mechanism that is in need. It's even more efficient than the older solutions with, that we had in Capricorn. This is not about believing in something. This is about actually proving that I have a better solution. It used to take me three hours and now it takes me only half an hour because I have adapted and I have it on the ground of reality. This is the better results that I'm getting here. So if I want to harness my wisdom for the good of the group, I need to adapt. I need to, to, to do my research. I need to do my homework. And we can see these two mind frames fighting in the world today as well. You know, the more scientifically bent and the more spiritually bent, the more natural and the more urban and modern. We have Pluto turning direct this week and it's stagnating in the sky. When Pluto is stagnating, any planet that is stagnating before it's turning direct is very powerful. And we could dig in too deep, we can hurt ourselves, we could be too critical, too total, we could be enraged over things that are minute. We can make mountains out of molehills. We can um, be too venomous towards ourselves or towards others. And we can understand ourselves much better psychologically, 
and we can evolve. <laughs> we can evolve and grow. We can let something die and something else begin. And Mercury is going to help us do that, navigate our life more easily and calmly and in a balanced way, in a way that looks on peace and love, with its turning and ingressing into, into Libra on the 29th. And seeing things from a different perspective, seeing the whole plethora, the whole palette of frames of mind and, and, and becoming much more balanced uh, with our thoughts and our communication and much more diplomatic as a result of that. Uh, we have a webinary course for evolutionary astrology coming up. If you want to study evolutionary astrology through your computer or your smartphone with me from wherever you are around the world, then uh, I think it's mid-October. You can contact me for details. And of course, for private consultations via the net as well. Any questions you might have about astrology, I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for heightening the light. And of course, your shares and comments are blessed. I hope I'm going to have a good time in uh, Greece. And that's it. I'm signing out. This is Boaz Feiler. Goodbye.